Hey, uh, what's up? A long time no see. Uh, today we will continue our pre previous uh, ADC tutorial. And, and the, the, the topic of, of this video is a Malloc watchdog. It, it is a very important and interesting topic because it will allow you to use the ADC peripheral in a smarter way. So instead of just sampling data, pulling data, uh, analog data periodically, uh, you let the microcontroller do things in background saving lots of computational power. So before, as I usually do before starting, uh, I want to explain uh, the, the notion of watchdog in embedded systems. So let's get started. So I googled watchdog in embedded systems and I got the following definition. A watchdog is basically a, a piece of hardware that can be used to detect anomalies. And if necessary, it can reset the processor. Um, and usually we have watchdog timer. Uh, but in our case, we have another watchdog and it has the similar idea. When uh, we have analog signal that we are, we are dealing with, and if we get something which is not expected, uh, the analog watchdog will, will trigger interrupts so we can do some actions to, to prevent failures. Uh, for example, in analog watchdog, basically we define a, a guarded area. So we define this low and, and high, low and high threshold in uh, analog um, value. So, so imagine that we have some, some sensor, uh, which, um, which uh, measures the, the, the temperature in the motor. Motor is working, so we have basically a low temperature in the motor, everything is fine. So our analog uh, sensor's value will be something close to the low th threshold. But at some point we have some excess current passing through the motor. And what would happen? The temperature will start rising, rising, rising. And at some point, the temperature becomes critical that, that, that the current can, can damage or destroy the motor. So, so when we reach this certain threshold, what we have to do? We have to, of course, turn off the motor or, or we have to decrease the, the current we are providing to the motor. So, so in that case, we have to do something, okay? So to accomplish this task, what we usually do, we just record the, the analog signal periodically. Let's say once uh, in every millisecond. So thousand times per second, we, we measure the analog signal and we compare with the, with the reference, okay? And, and uh, if, we, if we do that way, what would happen? Of course, we will we we'll lo lose a lot of computational time because the microcontroller will be busy by sampling and by uh, running our code in within the callback function. But if we if we use the analog watchdog, what would happen is that once we define high and these low thresholds, it will signal us when we have something out of this guarded area. So we will not do anything. We will not sample any analog data. We just enable the analog watch, watch dock, and it will work in, a, in the background. And if we have values inside, inside this guarded area, okay? So if we have something here, nothing would happen. And also we are, we are not sampling any, any analog data. Then when we, when we have, some value which is outside of the outside of this guarded just at this point the analog watchdog will will trigger some interrupt so so basically we just do something when we have we have when we have value outside of this guarded area so when we have that interrupt we can for example uh 
turn off, we can break um, the, the whole motor circuitry, we can do other things. So that's how analog watchdog works. And um, it, it's quite cool. And I mostly use this analog watchdog to deal with batteries. When we have low battery, low battery level, uh, analog watchdog would signal that I have low battery, or I can also use it when I have high battery uh, voltage level. So it's, it's pretty cool. So next thing, of course, I'm going to explain how to implement analog switch dock using the STM32 microcontroller. And uh, for this uh, tutorial, I'm using, uh, I'm using a nuclear L476 uh, board. So let's continue. Uh, so to use the analog watch dock, of course, we have to enable um, the ADC. We have to enable certain channels. But I already explained that in, in the previous video, so so I'm not going to waste time explaining that again. So so basically, in in this project, I'm using the code um, uh, which I explained uh, for for ADC programming with, with DMA. Okay, so if you need uh, all all these configurations, you can look to that video. But here, what I what I do, I just add analog watch doc. So here we just need to enable that. And we, we have several watchdogs. Okay, we have two and three. So right now I'm, I'm going to work only with analog watchdog one. So I enable it and uh, we have single regular channel. And here we need to choose the, the, the analog channel that we, have work, that we want to work with. So, so I, I choose channel one. And next thing, what we do, we need to define this low and the high threshold. So for the low threshold, I set zero, and for high threshold, I have thousand. So so our guarded area is between zero and a thousand. Okay, and we enable interrupted mode, and we go to NVIC settings, and also we have to enable ADC one and ADC two, ADC two interrupts. That's it. Then you need to save the file to generate the code, or you can you can press this button. Uh, after the code uh, generation, we just enable the interrupts in uh, ADC one. Okay, and I'm still keeping this uh, start DMA just to record the ADC data, but uh, but you it's not mandatory to do that. I'm just want to monitor the values. That's it. But but we can just comment this line. Okay. We don't need to sample to use the analog watchdog. Uh, next thing is we have to define this um, function, and uh, and uh, this is um, something intrinsic to the HAL API. Okay. So you have to use exactly this function to have uh, to have the interrupt. Okay, so this is the callback function of the analog watch dock. So when we have a watch dock, analog watch dock triggered, this function will be uh, invoked, executed automatically. So what I do here, I, I'm just printing this um, message uh, lev level out just to check that our analog watch dock is working. So next thing I want to connect my computer or my microcontroller. Then I will open the debug perspective. Um, so I'm in debug mode and uh, I resume the code. And and this value ADC data zero will shows the, the analog value in, in channel one. And I have uh, just a potentiometer connected to this uh, channel. So, so the current value is 782.81. So we are inside the, the guarded area. So nothing is happening here. But if I rotate the potentiometer, so we have almost 900 and 1000. And as you see, we were getting this message uh, in, the, in the console. And, and just a quick note that if you want to use printf function uh, in, in STM32 cube ID, 
there is another tutorial to explain how it works, how to how to configure a ping tap function. Um, so so everything is working, and uh, if I turn back, okay. So we have no more messages here. If I delete, nothing, nothing is, we, we don't have any new message here. So everything is working. And, and also, as I said, uh, it's not mandatory to sample analog data. So we can just uh, comment this line. So even if we don't sample any analog data, analog which watchdog would work just fine, okay? This is just to see the values, okay? just for us. And next thing, pay attention to the fact that when we have some um, values outside of the guarded area, we have so many messages printing out, meaning, meaning that the, the microcontroller is running this callback function over and over again. But once we detect this anomaly, if we have something outside of the guarded area, I want to run this function and then I want to stop. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be triggered so many times. So, so to do that, what we can do, we can use the, the following trick. Uh, first, I define um, within um, this callback function, uh, I have a static variable counter and I just increment this value um, in every iteration in, uh, and, and then when if we have something um, greater than let's say five if this function is triggered five times meaning that and if we have an watch stock one what I do I just disable um, interrupt so so why I'm using this counter because there might be just a noise with which will trigger the, the callback function. But if we detect it five times, it means that we can be sure that uh, really something happened. So that's why I'm using the counter. Uh, in your case, you can set, let's say 10 or 20, it depends on the application, but I think five is sufficient. Then I just disable the watchdog. So I don't have these messages printing and over and over again. So next thing uh, we can terminate and relaunch. Okay, so right now I'm in the debug perspective and, and before testing, just a quick announcement, a quick advertisement, let's say. As you might be aware, I have an educational uh, platform where I uh, have uh, several courses um, uh, in, about embedded programming, about uh, robotics. And I recently released a new, um, uh, a new course uh, about designing a balancing robot. So it is a course where you can learn how to design the hardware of, of the robot and how to do programming of SM32 uh, microcontroller to design the, the full control of the of the balancing robot. So you will learn how to control some of the DC motors, how to get, how to use the IMU sensor to compute the oil angles, how to use um, a control system algorithms, especially LQR, to design the, the balance uh, of, of the of the robot. And um, Currently, it's not fully finished. I, I still have some some topics I'm, I'm, uh, I need to add, but, uh, but even the current version of the course, there are a lot of things you can, you can learn. And it is very um, affordable, I would say, because I still have some um, topics, as I said, to, to be included. And, and um, you can right, right now enroll but the, the price will not change for you even after I, I add all, all the topics in the near future. Uh, so let me, let's continue our uh, analog watchdog. So I resume the code and we have something below thousand, so nothing is happening. So I, let me rotate the magnitude meter and boom. So what happened here is that 
uh, when we have something um, greater than thousand, we have this level out message, then uh, counter becomes one, then next time again, and at some point counter reaches five. That's why we have here um, six, uh, six messages. And then what I do, I just disable the analog watch stock. So, so the, this um, analog watch stock is not triggering the microcontroller. So, so we can be right now sure that we have something outside of the guarded area. So that's it for today. I I hope you enjoyed the video and learning learned something new. And and uh, before finishing, I just want to point out that I'm using just a analog watch stock one, but actually you can use a couple of watch stocks to, to consider even more complex scenarios. So, so that's why you, you can make your algorithm, your uh, logic even more complex. And if you have any questions about the tutorial, or about anything I explained, don't hesitate and drop some uh, comments. I'll be glad to answer your questions. So, see you soon.